Hello everybody, this is Scott Stengel from the Melco Applications team here with Nate, who's behind over here. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about adding realism to your designs. Um, whether you're doing, uh, part of your design is a, a nature scene, or you have bushes, trees, grass, things like that. Um, or you're doing uh, elk or um, horses, uh, dogs, stuff like that. You can really um, add a lot of visual interest uh, to your design by changing it up and not just using plain old straight fills that you see. Um, they're good for logos, but they get kind of boring and the normal fill patterns that repeat themselves, that doesn't look like the side of a cow or anything like that. So we'll show you some ways we can um, spice this up. So uh, first, when it comes to grass, grass is pretty much digitized like uh, tree uh, branches and stuff like that. Um, sometimes you see a little mound, uh, maybe a beach scene or something like that that's got some grass on it. Pretty much what we do for that, um, short of underlay and all that, which we've covered in the past, we'll just do the top stitching today. Um, I grab a, uh, the fill complex fill tool. I will change to satin for the stitch type and whatever the shape is, I'll just do something kind of silly just so you can see it. Hit enter, no holes. Start maybe at one end, stop at the other. When you uh, pick the angle, don't go straight up. Remember that merges with the grain of the fabric. It's always good to go something over. Um, and then you end up with a satin stitch um, like this. This is going to be really small, so we'll make, it, we'll make it smaller so it looks better. Okay, and what we do for this is I go into the properties and we want to um, use our special effects, which are um, effects tab, random edge, uh, one side or the other. 25% randomness I find is pretty good. And once you apply it, um, you can see that you've got, oh, some random top edges like that. If you need to, you can always grab the walk stitch tool use a longer stitch length, something like 35, 40 points, <clears throat> and just digitize walk stitches. You kind of just go crazy, and it doesn't matter. You want them very random, because that's the way they look in nature. And I'll just do a portion of it. Sometimes we'll shrink it down if it's too tall. And <clears throat> you can modify the different shapes um, so that it looks tends to look like real grass. Of course, grass is in blue. <laughs> so sure, we'll Kentucky. Green. Yeah, right, exactly. So that's really kind of uh, simple to do <clears throat> grass and um, uh, shapes like mounds and things like that. Um, they're done, like I say, just like the, the trees. So uh, we'll close that and we're going to spend some time in custom shapes today. So custom shapes is uh, opened up by clicking on this icon right here. Comes up from the bottom or it doesn't. Oh. You don't have a project open. Oh, <laughs> I guess you got to have something open, don't you? All right, so here we go. So we want to go to custom designs. This is in everybody's software. I populated it with, you know, a fair amount of designs. Just the point isn't to use my designs. It's to store the stuff that you use all the time. But uh, it's a, you know, decent library. So if I go in custom designs in common designs and I go all the way to the right side, I put in, uh, what, five trees for you. It's very simple to use this feature. All you have to do is select what you want, drag it to the screen, and let go. And you can see that um, this tree is all done. So I've uh, put all those together um, in one file. I'll open that so we can see it. And this just has all the trees that I showed you from custom shapes. So the first type of tree, um, we'll learn to digitize uh, is pine trees. So, I mean, obviously if I zoom in, this is the most boring way to do trees, which is just plain old solid fill. It's boring, it doesn't really reflect the light that well, it just kind of looks fake. So, a better alternative would be to use either column one or complex fill, as you can see here, and this is uh, inside um, the custom shapes is we use a complex fill. 
So start at one end, you know, digitize the whole thing, and then decide where you want to end. Now, to keep the trims to a minimum, I'm going to make sure that I don't exit all the way out at the end. I'm going to exit somewhere towards the middle so that I'm ready for the next shape. Anything? I, so with the way that um, fir trees get a little feathered, I'll do a very similar thing, but I will add a slight random edge to it. Exactly. And it'll feather that out. Did I jump ahead? No, no, that's good. <laughs> this is, it's so hard to keep this in a linear function because trees, you talk, you know, the same way that fur is kind of done yep. and there's just, it's all connected. So I have a whole bunch of samples to show you. Uh, um, I got kind of carried away. And so, as, um, as always for me, if I can have the software do the work for me, I will. Yes. Um, so uh, I'll show you that real quick. Um, if you, it, well, we already talked about this. If you add just a little bit of uh, randomness, either to both sides, a lot of times, um, 15, 20%, sometimes radical would be 30. Um, I'll show you 20. It's getting up there. Yeah, it is. Um, and it does get a little more difficult, uh, like with those shapes where you've got really thin to really thick, the really thick is going to be affected far, far more by that percentage. Exactly. So, uh, and, um, you know, if it comes out and your tree looks <clears throat> like it's not full enough for you, then you just select the whole thing and we're going to add um, uh, offset, pull offset to it to fatten it all up. Um, it doesn't take that much longer to digitize, but um, it sure adds interest. One thing that I do is change the angle. So this one might go five degrees this way, then some will go the other direction maybe once in a while straight up and down so that as you move the sew out um, you can uh, the light reflects off the branches and, and gives you some visual interest all right so um, another way here is just you can see that uh, the first one I showed you had all uh, kinds of curved points because it was a stylized tree just sort of flowing and everything if you have more of because you would call it a scrapper tree. <laughs> uh, I still use the complex fill, but I use all straight points and, and go in and out to, to add that raggedness. That's, that's one way to keep the distortion sort of... Under control. Yes, yeah, uh, uniform, even if your stitches change drastically in width like over one branch. All right, um, and then of course we want to cut the density. You can see here I did 4.6 or 5, something like that, because you know you want to make it look as real as it can. Um, most trees are, they're not all perfect. Okay, so that is um, pine trees. You can use column one. Um, you can use complex fill and or random edge to um, pull those off. Um, the next type. Um, that I'm going to show you is the fill tree. So here's one here that I had done in the past. You of course always want to do the the branches and the trunk first because um, it's going to be in the background behind and tuck the crown of the tree over the top. So this one's pretty simple. It's just um, what I did was again change the direction of the angle of the fills so that as you move it around you can see um, uh, the, the light reflects off it and kind of gives it more of a realistic look. I, I have, go ahead. I want to pause you there because <clears throat> I, I know you're talking about the leaves and whatnot, but mm -hmm. I love how you handled the base of that trunk. Oh. You have the pieces that come out, <clears throat> the roots that are, that are going a little bit more forward, you pull them forward with satin stitches. I think that's clever. Yes, definitely use uh, satin stitches. That's the, pretty much the whole motivation today is uh, use more satin stitches. No motivation every day. The, you, they just add so much more realism to, of course, uh, animals and people with their muscles. You just cannot duplicate that with a fill. And uh, also, you know, feathers in, uh, in birds that are flying or eagles, things like that. You just always want to use satin. So um, you're, you're playing the light off of it better and giving it more interest. Just, I see so many designs come through here that are just plain boring fills, like coloring book artwork. And uh, hopefully after today you can be a little... Uh, more uh, informed to make some cool designs trying some of these techniques.
Okay, so uh, this one's really pretty simple. I mean, I do have uh, a picture of the trees here, and I can zoom back. So you can see this one here, how it, it adds some interest, change in different directions. You can also see the plain boring fill versus using um, more satin stitches and complex fill and the bottom trees that I showed you also. So let me switch back to this one here. Um, the next one is going to be, uh, I call it a cedar tree, I don't know if it is, could be a maple, but it's a taller tree with uh, thinner spread out branches. So here of course, um, let me just uh, slow draw this for you, I'll bring down the speed. We're always going to start with the trunk and we're going to use a combination and you can sew out all these i would recommend just drag them all into a one design and sew them out on your machine to have a look um, you can see that this is a combination of walk stitches for the thinner type twigs and all that kind of stuff but then um, i used uh, column one this is an older design um, but uh, again, using all the straights and varying the width, you're going to give it some real good interest. Plus, you cut the density. This one was 5.2. Um, and it, it looks really good um, in real life. So this is column ones. You could also use complex fills. Um, sometimes it's faster for me to use column ones and just go. I mean, and a lot of you don't want to fix a lot of the imperfections because they look like they're supposed to. All right, no questions so far. Not We're good. So much. All right. Um, so then the next type um, is a really cool type of digitizing for uh, trees and bushes and things like that. So um, it involves it, it. Here's an example of it right here, and let me just quickly redraw it for you so you can see. Of course, again we start with the the, the trunk. Now here we're going to do a little bit of underlay, but a light density fill goes across here and then we're going to use our walk stitch tool to hand stitch is what I call it, but manually stitch um, some of the leaves to get a true craziness that um, you just can't find with uh, just normal programmed fills. Did you, two things, one would you change the color of just that element so they can they slash I want to see it. Yes, right here. Oi. <laughs> and I was curious if you did it with a lock or a manual, but that answered no, my question. I did, but you can see 35 points. Yeah, okay, so that so, makes it a little yeah, bit So, yeah, that's always a question. There's a manual stitch tool which only penetrates when you click. Um, that... Does is excellent except if you go way too far by mistake or something you're gonna get a gigantic long stitch or this makes it a little more scalable I don't know that I'd scale scalable. This. yes that's that's true so with 35 points it's still gonna pretty much only penetrate the fabric where I click but if I happen to miss a point or go way too far or the phone rings when I get distracted and come back it, it will still generate uh, 35 point stitches to keep things in line okay so you wanted to see this in a different color uh, that like red or, or? I, you're good okay I, well, I, I was gonna pull it off to the side to cool film that works done okay so how is this done everybody knows how to digitize the trunk of the tree and the and the uh, branches of course that's just here again complex fill column one column two how many cups of coffee did you have before you punched that <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Did you end>? <laughs> <laughs> well <clears throat> it was kind of like about 1990 All right. so we're talking DOS here so this these were done on a board with a, a mouse the, the old-fashioned way before we had on-screen digitizing you know a lot of times for wildlife that was I still believe the best way to do it because you had everything six times larger than your finished size and you could draw all your lines you could draw those uh, the vermicelli stitching in and just hit it with the points on screen I believe there's ways to do it um, like superimposing, uh, uh, you know, on top of it, right? I am a so, big fan of using vector lines and stuff like that over my graphics <clears throat> to figure out my stuff. So, um, so for this yeah. one, let me um, slide it off to the side. Whoops. And wow. 
Wow. So you can see it's just, uh, well, one of my favorite terms is ordered chaos. There, there's some order to it, but you, you don't want it to look Not too attached. uniform. So how is this done? So uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of uh, vermicelli stitching, but I have a picture of it um, right here. So quilters use this, right? A lot of quilters will call this stippling. Stippling, okay. Um, and so basically what it is is it sort of stair steps. We're, we're going to be working very small, so we're not going to be able to round all these shapes. We're going to pretty much go like skyscrapers, I guess. They're going to be more square because they're going to be so, so much smaller than this. But you can see in the pattern, you, you're just going kind of back and forth, and man, the effect comes out just beautifully. Um, I have another picture of this to show you. Where quilters will not go over themselves, Oh yeah. In 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 that form, <clears throat> you have the ability to forgive yourself for going over it, and I think that looks great. So here's another pattern. Yeah. And somehow I'm not a true expert at uh, illustrator, but there's got to be a way you could superimpose this over your art, right? Yeah. Or, or, yeah. And then you, here's your pattern to digitize. And again, don't try and hit the points. We're not working on any curved points at all here. This is like harsh <laughs> skyscrapers, get in, get out, and uh, it just looks beautiful when it's done. So I'll close this, get back to my trees. So when I highlight this, this actually works better in two, you can see um, as I move forward, it starts there, comes down, back up so it is basically doing uh, loop shapes and getting close to the edge scramble how long they are you want it to do to look exactly completely chaotic and that's the way you come up with that I think that was great. so you start in one and you're going over the top um, and working your way from one side to the other I can slow redraw it so you can have a look at how it works it's pretty fast Julie says it's also called meandering which I think is a fantastic that's a word that's cool yeah <laughs> I like that word yeah like a stream or something like that so uh, anyway you can run these and, and um, have a look at them but you can see here to fill in some of the background I use a 6.5 density fill which um, is digital do you know uh, yeah, speaking of that, you always want to go with longer stitch lengths when it comes to trees and to wildlife. So uh, this one happens to be 40 points. Okay. Um, you know, back in the day, if I remember right, we kept it about 40, 45 because that was as fast as the I thread. Say machine movements. The, and the, well, the thread wouldn't unwind fast. You know, I'd love to use 80 points and stuff, but... Uh, Okay, different now. All right, so that is the uh, light density fill along with the vermicelli stitching or meandering stitching. I like that term. Um, so I'll put him somewhat back. And then the last version here um, is again in the custom shapes. This has no fill behind it. Nice. So it is... Uh, so... All right. <clears throat> wow. I know. Done for rayon thread. I'll speed it up a little bit. Whoops. You had some patience to do that. Um, on a board, you know, it, it's just so much freehand that, um, yeah, it, it definitely all this is going to take longer than generating a fill, but right. can you imagine how many pieces you'd have if you tried to do this in a complex fill? It would no, just be all, thank you. all over the place. I've thought, is there a way to do, you know, some sort of a um, decorative stitch to do that? And you had luck when you did uh, the stippling, right? Eh. Sort of. But I think this just needs to be more chaotic. You, you yeah, don't want a pattern. Pa pattern is too patterned. I mean, you just, yeah. And so, um, yeah, this all looks great. Um, but let me just show you. You can apply this, of course, to smaller amounts of uh you know, smaller logos and stuff like that and still get some excellent realism. So, um, <clears throat> I'm looking for Wilson. All right. So here is one that I did. Um, I'll turn it into 3D. Um, 
you know, just a normal farm scene and all. You got the apples and the, the bucket and the, you know, fence and everything like that. Well, where's what we were just talking about? A couple of places right here. It's also up here and it's the trees in the back, right? And is that all the same color green or is that two different colors? Uh, two different colors. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if I slow this down, I can show you exactly. I put some backfill to it and then I just use this vermicelli stitching to go around it. Be careful you don't go too tight. Um, I found what happens <clears throat> when I was doing this, you want to, you stretch a long distance on your motion with your mouse, but then you're actually coming back working on the next point when you click, right? So you make sure that you click at your extreme instead of, oh, I'm going so fast, I'm doing this, and it's oh. actually coming in much shorter. I well, constantly and, ran and into with, that. I mean back when you digitized this, you didn't have the ability to click and drag as you were digitizing. If you do that now, you're gonna start dragging handles everywhere yeah, when you do it. Right. So, you just got busted. Okay. Julie goes, hey, you digitized, she was nicer than I am. You, it appears you're digitizing from the outside in, is that true? Yes, so uh, that's, uh, I planned on talking about that <laughs> a little bit. <clears throat> what you find, we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some beards later um, and oh, I know, I know. <clears throat> it just works best to start on the bottom row and then overlap or, or you know merge what, it. whatever whatever's going to come forward needs to sew last now he didn't just start out digitizing from the outside in he stabilized the area first so yeah we're breaking a few of our rules but only kind of yeah, I mean, if you take out that vermicelli stitching, I already had this base down, I had the whole sky, and I had all that kind yeah. of stuff in there. So this shows you anyway, though, because the realistic size of this thing is uh, two inches by three and a half or something. So it's very, very small. Of space. There was, yeah, there's a lot of detail. I, I love doing this kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing we'll cover in a bit, you can see the clouds. So the cloud this is made up of a light density fill but then there's a second one over the top so that when um, it shows up and this doesn't show on the screen but you can imagine this is going to appear more dense or more white than this this is going to let the sky bleed through and really come up with a, a pretty cool effect all right have we had enough about grass uh, and trees and uh, shapes like that <laughs> i hope so landscaping Landscaping. What do you want to talk about? Uh, no, I'm that I'm completely unable to comment at the moment. Oh, oh but okay. I'm calling. Keep on going. Yeah, you're right. good. Okay, so uh, next or after uh, trees and grass, we'll move on to adding realism to animals, which is some of my favorite. <clears throat> so. Um, Again, the thing, like we said just a little bit earlier, it's it's very important um, to use more satin stitches in your digitizing. They're for muscles, for feathers, for realism, turn corners. You, you just stitch them like limbs and stuff like that would be on people or you know legs on on uh, different animals and things like that. So more satins for sure. Even if the satin becomes a little bit wider, the fill if greater than is going to be um, set, which is right here. So it's going to turn your satin into a uh, satiny looking fill at those wider parts, but still pull off um, a raised look compared to a real flat step and fill. Look. Part of how it does that, you guys, um, if you <clears throat> noticed, the stitch length of that random patternless fill was a little bit longer even yet. It was a 50 which is nice. It keeps it nice and raised up and, and like Scott said, very satiny looking. Yeah, you don't want to go too long. 80 points is where I got to call the line. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's why. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little <laughs> less than that. <either. clears throat> All right. So uh, I'll show you an example. I believe I've used this one uh, before. We have a frog. And just think here how it would look in nature. So you can see that his head is coarse rounded. So we used a, a nice satin stitch for that. His legs 
no brainer just like the muscles would be um, it's pretty much the normal way that you would do stuff but notice you know his belly is going to be kind of flat so I used a regular fill for that and then when it came to uh, his feet of course we're going to use satin for his uh, toes but I used a fill because the bottom of yeah. the, the yeah, foot would be flat so um, man this thing is a nice one just it's very very small but it adds a lot of uh, shine and all um, with all the satin stitches showing up there's another one um, I have which is an elephant and this one um, show you love this one. 3d like that um, <clears throat> The way we, we do shading on animals is you're going to usually run the same type of uh, stitch that you used for the base color for the top. You're just going to lighten up the density and make the ends ragged. But the direction that the curve or, or the fill is going, in this case with the, his um, ears, they're curved. The, the shading is going to follow the same thing. So we use a longer stitch length because, uh, as Nate has said in other ones in the past, the longer the stitch length, the more things tend to blend together, which is I, exactly yeah, what I'll we use, want. I'll use a longer one for the stuff underneath, and I'll do a slightly <clears throat> shorter one for the ones on top to sink it down in. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> and so we can see a couple of things here. First, if you look at his uh, knee, um, we'll go into 2D mode, you could see that the top stitching it is the same exact direction like I said as the base stitching we're just gonna cut density this is 6.1 is what I picked so I wanted it to bleed through but still give me a highlight um, if you look up here at uh, his uh, ear the base is right like that and this is pretty much the same direction this is a curve because you think about how nature would look the the uh, elephant's ear would be somewhat curved, um, <clears throat> but still flat, so that's why I used the curved fill. Now when it comes to his legs, they're big and bulky. We use satin stitches on that, same with the highlights, and then of course you, you have to do this for his, his trunk. That's pretty fun. And this one, I think I've explained before, uh, is actually just one element. It's a fill. It's not... I would have so many more stitches if I did a column, 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 right, every one down because you have yeah. two sets of you penetrations. So for this one, uh, we used auto split feature and I used the satin that's going to keep the stitch length down so that when it slow redraws, you can see. It's basically the same tool, you guys, um, that you use when you're creating a hole inside of a fill, except this you choose um, instead of the, the insert type, it's, it's a I think a split or a, it's split, not a split line. It's a split. It's a split line. Yeah, split line. Um, and it's it's not closed like a hole, so you can have just an open one line, um, and it just makes all the needle penetrations line up right on that. And I love that. Yeah. I have a question for you on those ears that you were doing. Yeah. Did you digitize the thing twice, or did you duplicate it and edit the edge? <sighs> Very good. I always, <laughs> not always, uh, ninety times out of a hundred, I duplicate. Okay, I, I... That's just perfect, right? Because you already have your curve, your shape, your angle, everything, and then just duplicate it and then crunch the sides in and nope, make them right. That's ragged. great. That's really good because the more uh, similar the stitch angles can be, the more they're going to blend in and, and look good. All right, so um, that's how we do kind of shading. Now, I don't want any underlay, of course, underneath this highlight, right? And you want to just get in and do it and get out because you already got a base left. Yeah, no, yeah. You have another question or? No, that was, just, uh, I, I, when you duplicate it, if you have your properties on as the default, you may end up getting a bunch of underlay under that. And number one, that's way more stitches than you want. Number two, it's not going to further the fill. Yes. Um, something else that this always makes me think of, and, and I've said it in other videos, I've said it in just talking to people, um, because of my background, this always makes me think of a very particular style of drawing. So if you are looking for how to figure out where to put the stitch direction and what kind of stitch direction to have on it, um, think about having 
lines being projected onto the form and how they would curve across that form. And if you want really good examples for this, um, just do a Google search for cross contour drawing and it will show a lot of those lines and you can look at a lot of people who have been really great at that. Um, be careful because a lot of this was life drawing so a lot of those examples may be nudes so just be aware of that but um, really beautiful line work and then um, if I can figure out how to comment again I will I will post in a comment of some great people that that I like to look at um, one of the the really old ones um, great master Albert Durer was really great at dealing with lines like that and and I will translate his style of contour stuff into stitch directions works beautifully um, a contemporary artist uh, illustrator does a lot of fantastic work does it with um, scratchboard so very high contrast and then she'll watercolor over it but she is brilliant in how she deals with lines um, Kathy Bleck is amazing um, and so you can look up her stuff or you may even find some of it on I know for a while she was doing a lot of tea boxes in the grocery stores nowadays so um, yeah she's got a lot of really cool stuff out there so a couple of good ones to look at all right good info um, <clears throat> so you have, uh, you know, you're doing your first piece of wildlife or whatever. Um, you, you can, the easiest way to, to kind of add somewhat of realism to um, an animal would be just to change the properties, if you're just going to do a fill, to change the properties to more of a random. So I'm just going to show you the difference. We'll just digitize whatever. Here's the shape. Um, start here and here, whatever the angle is. <clears throat> All right. Now, <clears throat> if I go into 3D, you can see it's a logo look and fill that's going to repeat itself. All I have to do to go to the first level here is to change it to satin. The auto split's going to kick in and hit apply. All right, that is going to look a lot more realistic because you don't see the patterns as much as when it was more like a logo type fill. Also, with the random fill, you're going to have uh, a longer stitch length, so that's going to let your stitches, if you have different colors of uh, highlights or lowlights or whatever showing, it's going to end up much better there. So again, all that the first level is going to be to change to a satin. Um, and then, of course, leave the defaults at six millimeters or greater, or change it however you like, and just use that for your fill. Sometimes you run into like short furred animals, right? Short hair, uh, cows, things like that. You're, you're not going to want to put long hair stitches on a cow, it just, it just wouldn't look right. So a lot of times I'll use something like this if the cow is very small and a logo or something like that just to kind of make them not look like a logo. All right, that's the first way. Um, and I'll show you um, an example of a short hair um, dachshund that I did. All right, so let's turn this on 3D. So, you know, dachshunds, they have short hair. <laughs> it's kind of shiny and so here again you wouldn't want crazy random long stitch length um, fills or, or stitches thrown on top like we showed you with the vermicelli and stuff like that um, usually just shake up the needle penetrations and um, a little bit longer stitch length I think I used uh, four millimeters in this one here but notice that I changed the angle so that it picks up the light um, for you know it's going to be darker in here where his head uh, goes in a little bit and then I did shading on um, you know all of his ears and stuff like that all right so uh, to digitize the the shading and all just make sure that you either use random edge or stagger your points to just keep it looking um, more like normal okay so that's short haired uh, animals. Um, next, uh, I can show you, here's another cool one. Boy, I did this one. 
I did this one on Melco's first product, the Digitrack, back in, it came out in 1977. Um, I had one in the mid-80s. That was an awesome, awesome board um, and software. Um, so here is a lab pheasant. Well, Labrador retrievers don't have really long hair like uh, Shelties or something like that. And so uh, a fill is what I think looks the best, just pretty much standard. But then when I put the shading on, you can see I'm going in the same exact direction because the fill of the um, ear goes this way. But I'm using lighter and very ragged um, fills in this silver to try and pull off the highlights. Um, sometimes if you have to walk underneath, you know, it's light density, you don't want it to show, try walking somewhat closer to the edge because it's going to tend to cover there. Now, not out to the extreme edge, but I'm saying instead of in the middle, if you hug more towards one side or another, break up those stitches so you're just not going to have one straight you know, line of stitching that's going to be shown. Maybe as you walk up, you, you make it a little bit zigzaggedy and it'll look like part of the fill. All right, so um, you also can update your old designs. I mean, this one, <clears throat> back in the 80s, <laughs> We didn't have all these curved fills and underlay and lock stitches and everything we have now. Um, so this is a pretty plain, boring fill, which is what we had. I can just go in and let me get this. Um, all right, so here's the fill that's highlighted. Um, it's just a standard. Um, logo type fill, 3-4 density. It does have a 60 point stitch length. Um, we could change stitch length, but um, uh, we didn't have randomness. So if I'm just going to change this to a satin like I showed you, the 60 is already up. And now I've just changed that logo look and fill to somewhat random and it's going to produce a better effect. So you could go back into your old designs and um, spice them up a little bit. I could also add a wave and do some stuff that uh, I didn't have available back then. Alright, so short haired animals just use more of a regular fill and then highlights on top that are lighter. <clears throat> and there's another one here, now back to uh, custom shapes. <clears throat> Um, under sports, common sports, there's a fly that I did here. I'll just drag that to the screen. So, I mean, it's not a, a wild, uh, an animal, <laughs> but you can see here <clears throat> for this, <clears throat> we just used, uh, I, I just used um, more of a, a regular uh, satin fill. And then I go into it in the properties, and you can see under the um, effects, 10% on one side. Just randomize it a little bit. I don't want it to get too crazy, but it'll look more Realistic. like, yeah, those uh, woolly buggers. That's right? exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. It's a little, little cow. <laughs> Whatever you call them, yeah. And then when it comes to the feathers on the top, I mean, I wouldn't do this in a fill. It just would not come out looking right. Just grab the walk stitch tool and set the stitch length up. You can see here I used 30 points. Started here and I just used a bunch of straight points, no curved points, but notice that they're staggered. You wouldn't want to have, you know, every every line ends up with a point here you're going to see all so the penetration randomizing your stitch complete manually randomization yeah and if you see it in 3 uh, 3D let me see i can That's really sharp turn that off and just turn on the the one and even with it unselected you can see how crazy the pattern is and that's exactly what you want so this is one um, where you can't really duplicate it's just got to be different uh, yeah <laughs> so i digitized each one um, but that shows you an, another a, advantage for random edge and also just grab the walk stitch tool and go to it you'll, if, you'll just love it if i was feeling exceptionally lazy which is every day <laughs> i might try the base one as a fill but i probably would have to redo it because it probably wouldn't get me the look i wanted yeah um 
trout fishermen are very specific about how their flies are and they're is so specific too um you know we used to do flies above pockets on uh, work shirt type stuff and all and man that had to look like this certain fly that they use you know, or they, <laughs> they want to buy it yeah all right so uh that's using random that's the fly um so now the next step is long-haired animals we'll close this so i have one here <clears throat> is a bear and you can see if I look at it up close um, how the stitches are just all different directions right but there is some order to it his uh, belly is, is always moving this direction so all the stitches are also on top of it here you can see that the, the um, walk stitches that I put on top of the low density fill like I showed you try and run like the fur would normally run like Nate said you gotta try and think about which way um, nature is is directing the hair and follow that same way so let me uh, turn off everything and I will try and just show you um, this one color so we're at slow reach <laughs> sorry and well, yeah so they, they took longer to do, that's for sure. But another huge thing is we got a lot more money per thousand. So you had, you could invest more time in it and still turn a profit. I mean. But, but this is, this is taking it back to being more of an art, I think. Yeah. This approach. Sure is fun. Okay, so if I show you on slow redraw, you can see that uh, the first thing that comes through is going to be the fill. It's a little bit ragged. Then see how the stitches go on top? Here's a, here it is again. Here's a fill, and right back on top of it, I just walk down one side this direction and walk up the other. Notice that they're interlocked. Like I said, they have to be overlapped and working from the outside to in would will give you a, a hall pass for this one <laughs> you kind of have to do it a lot of times um, but, but what a difference it can make they're lighter densities and you're stabilizing the area first that that's exactly right yeah and um, they're similar but not as far as stitch length and all that that there's just it's ordered chaos i guess is the best way uh, i can put it um, <clears throat> So uh, there's another one too that I have that shows it really good. Um, I'll close this guy here. And I did one for a uh, blues company down in Denver. And pretty neat. I always like this one, right? Because it's reverse. Yep. You know, like negative, positive, or whatever. So what we're going to talk about is the beard here. And let me show you in 3D kind of how how it looks. It's it's just completely, completely random with uh, some shading on the top. So I'll turn off all of it, turn on just the white so that you can see, and um, we will slow redraw. Now when you see this, note that I started at the outside, and then the next layer is above it, but the two of them interlock somewhat. That's just really, really critically important. Few, few nodes, huh? <laughs> How else could you do this without I, digitizing so randomly? I do not have Scott's patience. I just don't. So I would have to do this where he did it all in one segment. Mine would probably be one for every layer because I would get distracted or I would have to talk to somebody or I'd have to go get another cup of coffee. So even if it's not all in one, if you layer it like he's layering it, you can do it in multiple elements. Um. Yeah, so <clears throat> the reason I didn't break these up is sort of when you get on a roll, you want to keep on going. No, I totally... If it's for money. But um, the other reason I, I do longer elements is because the nodes, as you digitize, stay on screen, right? As soon as you hit enter... You don't know where things are. Yeah, if yeah. it's the same color, you, you kind of lose your reference. So <clears throat> weeks back, we talked about that sunflower. 
and that whole outline is a whole one monster because as you walk out in that case you want to hit the same points on the way back that's just what i found so, yeah. worked the best for for outlines not for here we don't want to hit the same lines okay but um but you still have to know where they are to avoid them you do yeah and that's so maybe maybe i <clears throat> although <clears throat> what i did notice uh when i um started using design shop is you can highlight a node or, or uh, an element and you can turn on mm -hmm. um, you know expanded stitch penetrations or, or your uh, nodes even and so they're smaller when it's not selected but at least they are there yep. that was a pretty cool feature yep. again this can was you hover EDS. over that so they can see that 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 icon up, I'm pointing you totally can't tell where I'm pointing <laughs> the, the show expanded points Oh, exactly. Yeah. So here's the display sort of properties and um, expanded editing mode. And here is toggle expanded points. So that that will have them show up even when you don't have the element selected. Yes. Um, and so for something like this, it's it's easy to see because pretty much your your needle penetrations are where you're where you're clicking for a fill. Um, it for me, I will use it to help better visualize the, the pattern when I'm not in 3D so I can see where those needle penetrations are lining up and how they're lining up. Mm -hmm. So handy little tool. I, I usually don't have it on, but it is something that I will use when I'm when I'm needing to see those patterns or I'm needing to see those needle penetrations a little bit more easily. Definitely. All right, so um, let me show you in slow. You can see here's the first layer comes back over the top, and there's a third layer over the top. I of like that. that you you were fairly even, but then you'd come up, and then you were fairly even, and then you'd come up just to, to give it a little more stitch in. I like that. And to, to randomize it, because I found even if you go on the second, you know, second row back, if you're not really crazy, you're gonna your eye is gonna start to yep. see a pattern yep. in there. Yeah. Um it's just such fun to digitize this way because you get totally realistic results. Um, I've done some other characters with longer beards and uh, oh, they just come out sweet because you use a, a, a curved fill yep. and then you just put the stitches on top. There, there's almost no need to outline it in black to show how it is I because wouldn't. it's already there. Yeah, it kind of ruins the effect. Yeah. It's like it puts it back into you know, flat mode. Okay, so... Um, yeah, this that guy with his beard is pretty cool. I love doing beards and things like that. All right, I have another example. <coughs> I have millions of them. No. <coughs> All right, so here's a beaver. So uh, you can see here, I mean, this would look like a toy to do it in plain old fills. But you can see that uh, we I used... Um, the same fill with the hand stitching, the walk normal stitching over the top. So let me see. Yeah, it gives a little more definition. Let me turn this. There it is. All right, slow this down. So here is the fill. <clears throat> it's random. And now you can see kind of in slow motion went over the bottom now here is inner black uh inner what and what i like about top. this and i'm going to pretend you did it intentionally whether you did or not is where that break is between those two layers of top stitching falls right along where where the muscle exactly. line would be <clears throat> yeah you can see that it would go it would be uh, yep. pressed in there yeah and the bigger the wildlife gets the more options you have yeah you have a, it's a little oh bit easier oh my gosh yeah it can be hard to pound detail like with a eye with black and then also you got a, a you know a stitching around it for the eyelids or the you know and then you have white on top of that you just you got to stop with we, the layers sometimes and again i'm going back to my <clears throat> background but the, the, with art there's you know the economy of stroke how, how much you can do with how few brush strokes and and when you get to you, you just become very careful with where you place the color where you place the line where you whatever it's the exact same thing like it all transfers translates the perfectly same, huh? it's just hmm. what can you do with what stitch in this small area yeah. I think that's I think that's done beautifully 
So you can see that his body, which would have the fur, is, is done with the, the manual or the walk normal stitches in random. But when it comes to his tail, they're flat. Man. So, oh, yeah, they are flat. You know, I used a regular fill untouched for that. Again, trying to kind of mimic uh, nature. All right, so we'll get rid of that one. And... <clears throat> Here's one that I did uh, a while ago also. You might have seen this for version 9 Design Shop. It kind of used to be our mascot on the splash screen when you opened up the software. Um, <clears throat> for this one, um, well you can see <clears throat> that it starts at the bottom, works its way up. This one happened to be for hats. You go, what? Three inches? Yeah. Back when I did this, there were no finished hat machines, so you did them in panels and sent them to the manufacturer to be made into hats. That so you could get by with a lot larger area, but then hats that were popular then <laughs> were very tall. Well, that's also Not true. Not Dr. Seuss kind, but... All right, so let's look at his head here, and let me show you in 3D what it looks like. That's totally randomized. This thing looks like he has nice long fur, just like a fox does. Notice too the direction is this is not just like filling in like it is here with different um, layers to try and make hair that flows the same direction. This is the longer hair that you can see that actually curves over the eyes and stuff like that. So, um, what I did for that, let me see where this color is. You can see the stitches that go over the top are all done by hand. Start at the outside, work to the middle. You know, I never really thought about that till the comment this morning. Yeah, like, right. That's totally opposite. But we yeah. say so much so many times we get busted when we don't do it. And and this is exactly why vector conversion is just so hard to teach flawlessly to a computer because there's so many exceptions to every rule. So it's I mean it's a great starting point and it is really convenient for more basic stuff. Um, but I don't see it pulling off hair like that well anytime no, soon. Uh -uh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, and if I look at it, they're, it, they're walk normals at 40 points because this was longer. A little bit longer. So I that wanted to have yeah something a, a little bit longer and um, back and forth. So follow the artwork and um, follow the shapes that the hair would normally go and, and you're gonna have great results just gonna give could give you such a leg up on the competition because no one's doing this kind of stuff now. well and if the artwork I'm I'm super guilty of this but if I have slightly flatter artwork and the artwork does not have that definition and it's still all going to be the same color anyway I will go and search engines and the internet are a wonderful thing. I will go find photo references of the real versions of whatever I'm doing. So I have good points to break. I know what directions things will be. Um, and then, like I said before, I will draw on my logo or, or image in Design Shop with vector lines mm. where I want Constantly. those breaks to be. And, and using photo references is just huge. Yeah, having the vector lines Define smaller areas. It, it, it helps you better take small chunks, not be overwhelmed by, look at all, in this case, the fur on this thing. No, yeah, just I've... take one half of his, is above his eye. You know? yeah. Um, yeah, vector lines. Or you could use walk stitch lines and make them a really weird color so you make sure you delete them. <laughs> I, I, before I had vector, that's what I did. Yeah. Um, you know, what's funny is say you, you look at pictures also. Uh, when I had my digitizing business, I did, I think, 12 or 14 different dogs. But the dachshund was one that I showed you, and I'll show you a corgi here coming up. Tell me you brought them in. What's that? Tell me you brought the dog into the office. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I ha I'm a, a golden retriever lover. Uh, 30 years I've had golden retrievers. And so when I did the golden, the <laughs> picture I got was it wasn't a picture an actual f color picture it was a, it was a drawing 
yeah, it, 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 it wasn't the best, I'll say. And so when it came to how do the stitches or how, do, how does the hair curve around <laughs> here and there, I used the dog. Here, come here, let me see. It, yeah, it was pretty funny. I, I felt kind of silly afterwards, but hey, it worked. No, so. that's fantastic. I love it. So, uh, okay, so um, enough about the fox, I guess. And uh, I will show you oh, a corgi I was going to do. So this one, um, you can see it, it's very similar how these curve back and forth down here. They're going to be shorter hair. You just have to, you know, digitize just like the hair would be on um, the corgi himself. And first we do curved fills to set the base. All right. That's excellent. Yeah, this one. Um, the other thing I would say is great. Scott plays well with light over dark or dark over light you can get very different results doing that so just play with a little when you're doing this and don't be afraid to copy out a piece of what you're working on and just sew just that chunk and see does it look good this way or do i need to do it some other way so you don't do the whole thing and then be like wow that really doesn't work i have to do it all over again oh that's huge especially with trees if you're gonna say do one pine tree and then duplicate it a bunch throughout the design you know, make sure that's good before you go through this. Sorry, there's a question, and I wish I had this file. So the question is, how uh, would I show the definition on a horse? So horses, horses, horses <laughs> are shorter hair, yes. so they're shinier, so you can do a lot more with satin stitches, and you can go with that satin stitch across the whole band of muscle, and it, it creates that shine. Um, one, uh, the company that I worked for originally, this was before I was into digitizing, uh, the, the digitizer, we had a uh, beer company who had a Clydesdale as the mascot. You may be familiar with them. And she did the entire Clydesdale. There wasn't a fill stitch in it. It was all defined with satin stitches. And the feathers, the forelock, every muscle was done beautifully in satin stitches and it's where it all broke and i i wish i could find an example of that piece because it was a beautiful <clears throat> version of that i have <laughs> <laughs> i did the clydesdales uh both jacket back and also uh, uh left chest size and with metallic for their uh you know what do you call that the how they hook up to the oh the harness uh, harnesses and all yeah um <clears throat> yeah so, uh, depends on how big the horse is. That's a good point. Too. I, I've done horses and just changed the direction um, of the stitching. For sure, the, the haunches on the back mm -hmm. are the most important, so you use a, a wider satin or, for that. Or this line here, you'll just change the fill for this chunk of the it, horse. Exactly, yeah. And so, you can shake up the stitch direction lines to um, add something <clears throat> but to try and pull off that fur for a horse or for cows I find is really pretty difficult. It, it, and you would get the same thing with the Dalmatian. I mean they're just or yes. Doberman. It's just that super short hair. Or Dachshund Hounds that's why. Yeah yeah. yeah so more regular fill looks they're good. Long -haired dachshunds. Yeah that's right that's right. So here's uh, another a final example so I did one for a, a ranch here and so here's an elk and so he's really really small I mean we're talking yeah he's not big but um, wow. we can uh, let's see, I can show you you just uh, do the fill and then follow up with the stitching over the top It's even, you know, taking pictures of a lot of this, it, it, it just doesn't show in, mm -mm. in front to like, yeah. So you can see how it's row after row. Start at the top, work your way down, interleave them, and go completely random. <clears throat> and we did his head that way too and all that. Everything runs the same direction. Um, so there's an example in a normal logo how you can use this. Um, 
few other ones just real quick um, before we close up. So uh, you can pull this realism into a lot of other things other than just, of course, you know, animals or trees. Um, <clears throat> you can use, you can try and come up with patterns and, and whatnot to help regular logos. I used to do, I did several thousand country clubs and um, man, the golf ball fill that I did was, uh, was really popular with them all. So I've given it to you. So you go back to that custom shapes and we go to golf, which is custom designs, common sports. Take this, drag it to the screen, close this down. It just looks like a white circle. It does look like a white circle, but when I hit it with boom 3D, you can see that the way that the uh, penetrations are lined up gives a simulation of the dimples in the golf ball. Mm -hmm. So I actually stored this golf ball and used it in multiple logos when it would come up. I've even done shading where it might have a little portion of dark uh, down here and use the same pattern and they blend together. I, like, I will awesome. say it is far, far less convincing on screen than it is in the final cell out. Oh, it, yeah, night and day difference. Sew this one out. You've all got the custom shapes, so um, do it. But, uh, just want to make sure that you understand the, the properties. Um, <clears throat> so we go to... Sorry. Go ahead, please. Oh, finish the properties on this fill because it's kind of amazing. Uh, densities change, of course, based on the fabric you're going to put it on, but a shorter stitch length this time. Uh, 25 to 30 points. If I do really small golf balls, you... If if you make that longer, it becomes more of a basket weave look. Yeah. And you can apply it to a basket, you could. not a golf ball. Exactly, but yeah, and store these all. Um, <clears throat> but notice the, the, the parameters here is normal fill. It has eight partitions, but the sequence is 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 4, 4, 4. That means for four lines in a row, it'll hit the same zero on the, pen, on the partition line sequence, and then it will switch to fours and back to zeros. That gives you that sort of semi-brick uh, brick look. To four, it. exactly. Four being the halfway mark in, in the stitch. Um, stitch partition lines, crazy detailed amount of information. What does it all mean, and, and how does it all work? Um, it's uh, take a look in yeah, the manual. Right. Um, the great thing. The other thing that made that work was the ninety degree of that angle. Right. That makes everything line up. Because forty five, yeah, it wouldn't work. So one of the questions was, <laughs> do you digitize your own underlay? <laughs> so I'm gonna take a guess. Take a guess. <laughs> Scott digitizes everything. Yes. Um, especially if we're looking at things that we did before some of the auto stuff was even available. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, that you could see the picture there by Nate. That's me sitting at the Digitrack, Melco's first product. So when I started in 1985, there was no lock stitch feature. There was no underlay feature. We, we had pull comp and change in density and short stitches. So, yeah, if, if we're going into the kind of vaults of our designs that we've done in the past to find examples for you, yeah, you'll see some older style digitizing because the, the they're really good examples still and, and the technique's really great. You just may have some faster ways to do parts of it now. Today, yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is in the past, a file was basically a chain of nodes. <laughs> At start to yeah. finish, it, you didn't it, have separate. Tools. There was no. It did. It wasn't cat. You didn't have it separated where you go. Here's a column, and next to it is a fill, and next to it is a walk stitch. It, it's. It was just a big stream of data from start to end, and that's just the way we did it. We did the underlay, then we did the top stitching, then we did the underlay, then we did the top stitching. So yeah, if you if you see some of that in some of our files, that's why. I'm trying. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, that wasn't a critique. It was a way to be observant. Um, so on big stuff, I, I do use uh, underlay, you know, jacket backs and all that. But even today, if you have this little golf ball that's a inch, two inches, inch and a half in diameter, you know, by the time you go turn on the right kind of underlay and all this stuff, I could digitize this and be working on the top stitching. Yeah, but now see, that doesn't give me flexibility to change it. I'm using the automatic stuff. stuff. It's yeah. all there. If I don't like it, then I'll think about changing it. 
Yeah. Well, see, the other thing is, I'm not um, so lazy. If you have designs where, say, you you have the fill, you could do the underlay there and then do the the fill. Then when you get to this to the stitching on top of that fill. Um, you want to lighten up the underlay. You don't need double zigzag edge walk because you're on the second layer. And so... You just, do need to tweak it. It's a different thing. I don't know. I just learned to do design old, old, stuff. Old habits are hard to get rid of. <laughs> they are. You develop a style, and it, it is really, really hard to switch. Um, okay, so that is um, the golf ball fill. Um, another one that's... Uh, quick example here is um, the soccer ball that's in there. So if I take this and bring it up here, you can see that each panel is a different direction. See that one's this way, this one's that way, and so you can try and angle them so that it try to draw your eye around the shape but having a different an uh, angle for each panel makes the light reflect differently and gives it a heck of a lot more realistic look than if I would have done a flat whole white fill and um, you know, black on top of it. That's a great point. So break it all up and then I have one more to show you here which is a similar point to this. Um, <clears throat> let me find him. So here is one, I'll turn off the underlay that I'm just working on lately. Um, so as far as the stitch directions go, you can see that here on his, uh, is that called a neck? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they're all neck. <laughs> it's right? all neck, like, yeah. Anyway, it starts horizontal here, and then as it works its way up, by the time you get here, it's changing this direction so that this is going to play off the light and, and make it look like it stands out and looks real instead of just flat horizontal fills all the time. But the main reason is, that, look at the side of his head. So this fill... Now this is a huge design, it, guys. This is jacket back, 13 inches. Yeah, you, you might see it at a trade show coming soon next to you, near you. Um, but in order to get the light to try and make it seem like he, his head had some dimension, we change the angles as we go back. So this one runs this way. Now we're starting to move uphill, and these guys here and this one are curves that go here. So we started from horizontal here, moved up a little bit, and then up even more. So the whole um, the, the whole uh, pattern of the stitches kind of draws you around to the top. You can use this for bumpers on cars, all sorts of different um, go through applications. Go through the yeah, that's going to look sharp. It's hard to see, though, in, in this. Um, oh, that's why you didn't. Well, yeah, I mean, it. it yeah, there you go. I could look. Yeah, that's okay. great. There you go. So now you can see that here, here, and here. Always change the angles of your fills on any kind of logos, geometric shapes, whatever you can do to pick up the interest, without a doubt. Um, and I think I talked your ear off. That was over an hour. We, we've got. Uh, more questions? At, well, uh, at least one more that I'm going to try to answer real quick. Okay. Um, I think it might not be a bad option um, for, for either an article or a video or a something coming up. But the question is, is do we ever try to imitate hand stitching? Um, and, and so the answer for me is yeah. And there are sometimes that there there are stitches that I cannot do. There, I I can't make a French knot with, with a machine. It's just not a thing you can do. Um, but silk shading, I try to mimic that. Um, you know, stem stitch, do I try to mimic that? Yeah, sure. And and how do I do all of those things? Um, a lot of times, it's it's with the stuff that Scott's already said. You know, I'll I'll lengthen my stitches to to give them a little bit more loft and make them. Um, I'll use random edge um, to, to, to mimic that long short of uh, silk shading. For the more um, like a stem, a stem stitch or something like that, I will digitize my own decorative stitches. So we've done um, videos on, on decorative, we've done them on blending, and there are little bits of those uh, in there, but, but maybe that's something that I should, mm -hmm. I should look at a little bit more. Good so, idea thank for you for future that. topics.
Okay, hopefully I've given you some uh, motivation and a few ideas on how to make... Uh, inspiration. Inspiration, how to make your wildlife and uh, nature designs look much more realistic. I tell you, though, if you do it and guys see it, you'll get a lot more work. If you make wildlife look real and do it small and classy, they just eat the stuff up. So, All right, so we'll call it a day, and uh, we'll catch you next time. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Thanks, guys.